Well, let me talk about the photoelectric effect and its uses in daily life. Photoelectric effect is one of the three possible interactions of gamma radiations with the electron shell. Out of these three interactions, photon has usually the lowest energy. It's a physical phenomenon where electrons are ejected from matter, usually the matter, due to the absorption of electromagnetic radiations. Electrons emitted in this manner are then called photoelectrons. Their emission is called photoelectric emission and you can say photo emission. Henry Church was a scientist who discovered the photoelectric effect firstly, who noticed during his experiment with a spark gap generator that sparkling ultraviolet radiation exposure facilitates the flashover and electric charges transmission between electrodes. Another scientist, J.J. Thompson or Joseph John Thompson, he clarified the nature of photoelectric phenomena decisively in 1899. He identified electrodes in the flow of negatively charged particles emitted from the metal. An unusual phenomena was discovered in the early 1900s. If a beam of light is pointed at the negative end of a pair of charged plates, a current flow is smiling. A current simply a flow of electrons in a metal, such as a wire. Thus the beam of light must be liberating electrons from one metal plate which are attached to the other plate by electrostatic force. This results in a current flow. But in classical physics, one would expect the current flow to be proportional to the strength of the beam of light. Like more light is equal to more electrons liberated and definitely that is equal to more current. The observed phenomena was that the current flow was basically constant with the light strength. Einstein successfully explained the photoelectric effect within the context of the new physics of the time that was quantum physics. In his scientific paper, he showed that light was made up of packets of energy called photons. Each photon carries a specific energy related to its wavelength. Photons of short wavelength like blue light carries more energy than long wavelength like red light. To release an electron from a metal plate required a minimum energy which could only be transferred by a photon of energy equal to or greater than that minimum threshold energy. Each photon of blue light released an electron but all red photons were too weak. The result is no matter how much red light was shown on the metal plate, there was no current. The photoelectric effect earned Einstein the Nobel Prize and introduced the term photon of light into our terminology. Yes, it was the Albert Einstein who discovered the nature of phenomena in 1905 in detail. For this, he got the Nobel Prize. Here the question is, when photoelectric effect occurs? Well, it occurs when the entire energy of photon passes on an electron in the electron shell of the absorbing material or a free electron like in matter. Part of the energy enables emission work function phi of the electron from the atom and the rest contributes to the electron's kinetic energy as a free particle or photoelectrons. Let me tell you here about the work function. It is defined as the minimum amount of energy that is necessary to free the electrons. The gamma photon perishes and its energy is taken over by the ionizing photoelectrons. Einstein's photoelectric equation formulates the law of conservation of energy. After absorbing the energy of photon, the atom is left in an excited state and returns back to the ground state after emitting the electromagnetic radiations. In this figure, photon is striking with a metal plate and it is ejecting the electron with a kinetic energy half mv square. An energy of the photon that is striking on the metal that is h nu. E is equal to h nu of the photon and half mv square that is the energy of the electron. The empty space left by the emitted electron is filled by another electron from a different electron shell of the atom. 
During this jump, energy in the form of specific radiation is being emitted out. What else can also happen is the organ effect, where the energy is transferred to another electron of a higher electron shell, which is ejected from the atom and this second ejected electron is called the organ electron. Here experiment showed that electrons kinetic energy is related to the frequency and not the intensity of the radiation shining on the material. Photons interact with electrons in shell K, L and M means electrons close to the nucleus. The interaction is usually situated in the shell K. So in this figure you can see the gamma ray is striking with the K shell electron and it is emitted out in the form of photoelectron. Every metal exists with a certain minimum of frequency that is threshold frequency and it is denoted by F0. The photoelectric effect occurs only when light above the threshold frequency is shown on the metal. The energy of the emitted electron depends on the frequency of the incident light. If the light frequency is higher than the threshold frequency F0, the energy of the photoelectron ranges from 0 to certain maximum energy that is E maximum or E maximum is equal to H times in the form of equation. E maximum is equal to H times F minus F0, where F0 I already told you that this is the threshold frequency. Now we will see here the types of photoelectric effect. According to the way of electrons formation by the absorption of the electromagnetic radiation, we can categorize it into three forms. One is the external photoelectric effect other is the internal photoelectric effect and third is the inverse photoelectric effect. External photoelectric effect is on the surface of the material where electrons are emitted out of the metal. Second, internal photoelectric effect is the emission within the material. Emitted electrons are left in the material as conductive electrons or you can say semiconductors. Third is the inverse photoelectric effect it's opposite to the photoelectric effect. In this case, electrons absorbed by the atoms cause the emission of photons. Something more about the photoelectric effect. Albert Einstein based his thoughts on the Planck's quantum theory and the idea of electromagnetic wave behaving like a complex of particles like light quantum, where each has its own energy and momentum. These particles are unusual because their velocity is always equal to the velocity of light and there is no way to stop, decelerate or accelerate them. The energy of light shining on the material is passed on the surface electron. An electron is only ejected if it acquires more energy than the work function. And you know the work function is actually the electron binding energy. This energy is directly proportional to the light frequency and inversely proportional to the light wavelength. The minimum frequency that is necessary to liberate the electrons is called threshold frequency. If the absorbed energy is higher than the minimum amount of energy needed to liberate the electrons, the rest contributes to the electron's kinetic energy as free particle. Now we see its uses in our daily life. Photoelectric effect plays an important part in biophysics. This knowledge can be applied in radiation screen. X-ray pictures are created on the principle of inverse photoelectric effect. Because the surface is bombarded by electrons and so the X-rays arise. Different tissues have different absorbance and that's why we can distinguish different structures on the X-ray pictures. In contrast to Compton effect, there are no free electrons left. Photon perishes and it never comes to collisions and changes of directions and wavelength.